Did you know that 85% of men can produce sperm and still be infertile? Basically, a man can produce sperm, which is required for fertilization, but still be unable to impregnate his partner because he is producing sperm, but he's producing bad sperm. Welcome to All Round Health Talk with your girl, Dr. Oninye. Remember, this is a channel where our health is our priority. Before we go right into today's topic, please do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Now, today we're talking about sperm health in men. So, first of all, we want to know what is a sperm. The sperm is a reproductive cell of a man. Okay, It is produced in the testicles, right? And it is responsible for fertilizing the female egg in order to produce a new offspring. Okay, So, if you want to have a, a, a child, then you would need a sperm from the man to fertilize the egg from the woman. Okay. Now, we know that men produce millions of sperm with every ejaculate, but do we know what a sperm looks like? Now, what does a sperm look like? A sperm looks like a tadpole. It basically has a head and a tail. It has a middle piece, but the most significant part of the sperm is the head and the tail. Why is it the head and the tail? The head because it contains the genetic property of the man and it is the head that penetrates the egg to fertilize it, depositing the genetic properties of the man into the egg. Okay, and the tail is important because it is a part of the sperm that allows the sperm to move and swim all the way up to where the egg is waiting to be fertilized. Now, what should the head look like? The head should be flat, it should have an almond shape, it should measure 4 to 5 micrometers in terms of length, and very importantly, the head contains the genetic properties of the man, it contains the chromosomes. Now, we all know that every individual has 4 to 6 chromosomes. 23 of these chromosomes come from the man, which is what we find in the head of the sperm, and 23, the other 23 chromosomes come from the woman. All right? Now, these chromosomes, the chromosomes that the sperm carries in its head, can be X chromosomes or Y chromosomes. The woman's egg naturally contains X chromosome, nothing else. X chromosome is specific for the female species. Now, determining the sex of the child that will result from this fertilization depends on the chromosome that the sperm deposits in the egg. If the sperm carries X chromosome and deposits X chromosome in the egg, then the woman now has two X chromosomes and that is a female child. If the man's sperm carries Y chromosomes, fertilizes the egg, deposits that to the woman's egg, then the egg now has XY chromosome and that is a male child. So the sex of the child will depend on the chromosome that is carried by the head of the sperm. Now, what does the tail look like? The tail is supposed to be slender, it's supposed to be long, thin, straight, okay, and it should measure um, 50 micrometers in length. This tail is very important, like I mentioned before, because it is what permits motility, okay? It is what permits the sperm to move all the way to the egg. Now, we know all of this about the sperm, but as a man, it is important for you to take care of your sperm. And you might wonder, okay, how can I take care of my sperm if this thing is being produced in my testicles, I have no access to it? Yes, you can take care of your sperm. If you're preparing to get pregnant, you have to make sure that your sperm has these five characteristics I am going to talk about. Now, when a, a couple wants to have kids, usually the woman will go for different tests just to prepare herself to know that she is fit to have a child. But the men also have to do a test, and that is called the sperm analysis test, okay? So this will analyze your sperm and it will analyze different characteristics of your sperm. But I'm going to talk to you about five characteristics that are very important for you to be able to fertilize a woman's egg. It doesn't mean that if one of these characteristics is altered, you will not be able to um, fertilize um, an egg or it does not mean that you're infertile. It means that it might be a bit difficult for your sperm to fertilize an egg. Now, the characteristics we're going to talk about are number one, sperm count. Sperm count is the number of sperm cells per milliliter of semen that you produce. Now, generally, it should be between 40 to 300 million sperm cells per milliliter of semen that is produced. Anything below 10 million sperm cells per milliliter is low. Okay? But, again, this will also depend on the quality of the sperm you're producing. So it's not just about producing quantity, it's not just about quantity, it's also about quality. Because if you're producing more than 10 million sperm cells, but the quality is not good, then it's not going to be effective. So the sperm count is very important, all right? And this tells us about your testicular capacity. If your sperm count is low, then we begin to think about your 
testicles are they okay are they functioning well or could there be hormonal problems number two sperm morphology now this is basically the form of the sperm we've talked about the parts of the sperm so everything we talked about the head and the tail of the sperm this is the part of the analysis that deals with that aspect the form of your sperm is the head almond shaped or is it orange shaped is it smooth or rough is it bigger than it should be is it four to five micrometer in length or bigger than that so that will tell us the form of the head and also the form of the tail is the tail long is it short is it bent is it straight right is it curvy is it fat or thin so this is what will tell us the quality of your sperm are you producing good quality sperm but the good part is that you don't need to produce all your sperms don't need to be of good quality for you to be able to impregnate your partner all right you only need four percent of your sperm that is produced in each ejaculate to be normal so normal head shape size and and um form and the same thing as the tail all right number three liquefaction liquefaction is the ability of your semen to move from a semi-solid um form to a liquid form so generally when a man ejaculates the semen is kind of like a, a bit like a, a coagulated it is semi-solid in nature but if you leave the semen to sit for a while it will be, be, begin to become more watery right and this is very important because it permits the sperm cells to be able to swim easily to the egg so it takes 15 minutes for the semen to move from a semi-solid form to a completely liquid form more than 60 minutes means that the liquefaction of your semen is delayed and this can affect the rate at which your sperm is able to move number four semen volume okay the sperm fertilizes but the sperm is carried in a semen coagulated it is semi-solid in nature but if you leave the semen to sit for a while it will be, be, begin to become more because the smaller the volume of your semen the lesser the quantity of sperm that will be that will be evident in that amount of semen and that will affect fertilization so we want to make sure that volume is also intact if there's a problem with volume like if you're producing less than 1.5 ml of semen then we might suspect that there is an obstruction of your ej ejaculatory duct or some problem with the prostate or the, ves um, the seminal vesicle so all of these are important and the last characteristic i'm going to talk about is sperm motility we've talked about it movement of the sperm now there are two forms of movement generally three forms one form is a progressive movement this is where your sperm is moving and moving forward we need forward movement to get to the egg then we have the non-progressive movement your sperm is moving but it's just moving in circles so it's not going anywhere that movement does not help us and then we have the sperm that is not moving at all so when you combine this progressive movement and the non-progressive movement at least total motility of your sperm should be 40 percent for it to be able to get to the egg and fertilize the egg all right so the motility is important too now knowing these characteristics of the sperm knowing that the quality of your sperm as a man the quality the quantity of your sperm as a man the characteristics of your sperm as a man is important for fertilization to occur how can you as a man take care of your sperm health Number one, you need to avoid overexposure to heat, especially when men use hot tubs. Try to avoid that. Uh, if you're a man and you work in a place where you're exposed to too much heat, then you want to make sure that you have the adequate protect protective gear to avoid damage to your sperm. And we want to avoid excess or intense exercise because the, the sperm are in the testicles. The testicles descend from the abdomen when a boy is born. Within the testicles, the temperature is lower than the body temperature because that's the temperature that is perfect for the sperm. Any extra temperature, any high temperature can cause damage to the sperm. Number two, wear loose fitting boxers because we don't want to wear tight boxers that will trap in heat and cause the sperm to be damaged. All right. So it's important that you wear loose fitting boxers. Avoid smoking. Smoking is bad for everything. Avoid smoking and drugs that will damage your sperm number four if you drink limit your alcohol consumption over consumption of alcohol can also damage your sperm also make sure that you're exercising regularly not intense exercise but just normal exercise regular normal exercise and good quality sleep is also good for your sperm and last but not least eat a healthy food make sure you're eating food that is colorful vegetables fruits um avoiding trans fats and junk food because all of that can also affect the health of your sperm now i hope that this information has been very educative and very worth your time because as a man it's important that you consider the health of your sperm 
as you decide to make the choice to become a father. Now, if this has been interesting and educative to you, please make sure you share it with other people so that we can all be enlightened. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel. All right, give thumbs up to motivate me to keep making more videos like this video that tells me that you like videos of this kind of topic. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.